Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome once again to this uh, course on convex optimization. Yesterday we ended our course talking about projections and normals because we had uh, symbolized the sub differential of the indicator function as, uh, as in the normal cone to a set at that point. So, it is very important to know what is actually that normal and normal cone. Now, it is where we had finished in the last lecture that okay, for every point outside there is a to a close convex state C there is a point on the set basically on the boundary of C such that the distance x minus x bar the norm of that provides the minimum distance or dis that gives you the distance of x from the set C. Now, let us look at certain interesting properties the normals follow. Again take this convex set, take this point here which is say a projection point of this x which is and this is x bar and or like maybe I will call it, I will just call this as y x because y is what we were denoting as points in C and y x is the projection of the point x. So, we will write this as the projection of on C of x on C. And now, you take any other point say y in C and join it with y x, then this angle if you observe is an obtuse angle. So, which means that the inner product of this and this vector is less than equal to 0 and this is true for any y you take, take any other y say y dash you will have the same thing. But interestingly this is a necessary and sufficient condition for the point y x to be the projection of x on c. So, let me write down a very important result. The point y x element of C is the projection of x on C if and only if. x minus y x inner product y minus y x is less than 0. So, it is a if and only if condition. So, it is instructive to go through the proof of this. So, we will do the proof. So, how do we uh, go about doing the proof of this fact? The proof is as follows that okay, uh, you have taken in our case our f y is of course, this f is dependent on the x naturally. Now, take any y y in c and consider y x plus lambda times y minus y x, where lambda is a number between 0 and 1. So, because these uh, y x and y both are in C, we 
we have y x plus lambda y minus y x as an element in C, since C is a convex set. Now, what do I know? Suppose I know that y x is a projection. So, let we are starting with the fact that y x is a projection. So, here we have started with the fact that y x is a projection. So, if y x is the projection, so it would imply that f of y x must be the minimum, y x is a minimizer. So, projection points are obviously minimizer of this function. So, minimum, so because this is an element in C, so it will obviously sorry. Now, writing down this fine the functional form, this would give me half of norm y x minus x whole square less than norm of y x minus x plus lambda y minus y x. So, this if I write down, so this will become if I open up the norm, norm y x minus this was half half. So, half norm y x minus x whole square plus half into 2 into y x minus x with lambda outside and y minus y x plus lambda square times norm y minus y x whole square. Now, this will cancel off. So, you would have 0 greater than equal to lambda times norm y x minus x and y minus y x plus lambda square now if i divide uh, now i can divide because lambda is between 0 and 1 i can divide both sides by lambda and i'll obtain this expression will obtain 0 is bigger than y x minus x into y minus y x plus lambda times norm y minus y x whole square. Now, as lambda goes to 0, we have when it is positive and going down to 0, we have this would imply x minus y x inner product y minus y x is less than equal to 0. Now, since y was arbitrary, it was just a any element in C. So, this is true for all y in C. Now, suppose I have this result this result has is been given to me. So, Suppose this is true, the question is, is y x the projection of x on c, that is the question. So, we are going to prove that yes it is, so there is a beautiful result which has a this beautiful correspondence. So, Okay, what you have is the following 0 is bigger than x minus y x y minus y x. So, again you can write this as y minus x 
plus x minus y x. So, again this would become if you do the inner product x minus y x to x minus y x plus x minus y x into y minus x. Now, this is nothing but x minus y x whole square and by using the Cauchy Schwartz inequality, this is obviously greater than minus of norm x minus y x. Cauchy Schwartz. Now, this means that I can now take on this side and cancel of this x minus y x and so finally, I will get the following inequality. I will get that norm of x minus y x which is same as norm of y x minus x is less than equal to norm of y minus x, but y was any arbitrary element in C. So, it is true for all y in C. So, this relation would hold for all y in C because this is true for all y in C. So, this would immediately mean the following that y x is the projection because it solves a projection problem and that is it. So, if I uh, talk about the normal cone you now see how does that idea of normal cone comes. Now, this x minus y x this term if I write it as v, then I have this expression. Now, this v is called as we have already seen earlier. So, v is called the normal this x minus x bar which is v in our case is called the normal to c at x bar. So, v is called the normal to c at x bar c at y x sorry not x bar y x. So, as you have observed from the picture that there can be more than on one x to which y x is the projection. So, there can be more than one such v's for which this is true. So, let us take the collection of all such v's in R n such that. So, I take a point x bar. So, I take a point x bar in C and collect take a collection of all those v in R n such that this is true. Now, if you look at this set, this set follows the definition of a cone. If you take any v, then lambda v is also an element of this set. So, this is set is called the normal cone, the cone of normals basically to the convex set C at the point x bar. A normal cone as we have seen is a vehicle for representing opti optimality conditions and you see how the sub differential uh, notion of the indicator function is linked directly to this geometrical thing. So, it also shows that at a certain level the sub differential is also a very geometric thing and also brings in a fact that depends so much on the geometry of the space and as a result of which a lot of enriching happens and a lot of interesting things get revealed because this interplay between analysis and geometry. Now, once you have this the question is of course, if I put 0, 0 would satisfy this equation and so 0 must be in the normal cone ok that is fine. But suppose I have a set like this, this is my set, this is my set C and ok here you draw the normal cone it's like this, this is my x bar. But you might ask me then where is your 0, 0 is here but x bar is not 0. 
actually this is nothing but a translation of the usual uh, original normal cone. The norm to draw the normal cone at taking 0 as the base point or the vertex, you draw lines parallel to this one. So, this is actually your normal cone to C at x bar and this is nothing but a translate of this to the point x bar that is x bar plus n c x bar. So, this tells you that okay, if I take the origin of this to x bar, then this is what will happen, then the normal cone is exactly this, if the origin is now x bar. Okay. Now, once I know about this, the question would, I would have some very interesting calculus about normal cone, which I will show you, which will help us to do a lot of uh, interesting things and which would help us to do write down certain optimality conditions. Uh, let us go back and let us slightly complicate the minimization problem, the convex minimization problem that we had studied. So, suppose I want to take minimize the function f x subject to m inequality constraints and remaining is affine constraints h i x h j x equal to 0. So, I can now make this compact, this is convex and differentiable, this is, these functions are convex and differentiable and affine functions are anyway, these functions are affine. So, these are convex and differentiable. This problem can be equivalently set up like this, minimize f x subject to an i where A is a k cross n matrix. Now, how do I write this? Because each h i h j x can be written as a j x plus b j. Now, there are k such constraints. So, linear plus some translation that is what the meaning of an affine function. Now, once you have this, because otherwise you know the full feasible set would not be a convex set. So, my C here is now described like this. So, if you look at this, if I take A j to be a row of a matrix, so A 1 A 2 dot 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 A k. So, they form a k cross n matrix, which is A here and B 1 B 2 B k is the number of uh, these constants. So, they would form a vector B. Now, this C here this is how I can write my c. So, if I want to write the optimality condition, it becomes 0 is an element of grad of f x, suppose x bar is the minimum So, x bar is a minimizer if and only if this holds. Now, you see computing the, the whole question now lies 
as how to compute we have studied the Karush Kuntakar conditions just uh, in the last lecture I guess. This is the what we had studied the Karush Kuntakar conditions. Now, how do I reach the Karush Kuntakar condition? Here we have come to the Karush Kuntakar condition by applying the max function the calculus rule. Now, suppose I am not having in hand this calculus rule, what am I supposed to do? Now, you observe that this set C is quite a complicated set, it is not such an easy set that you can write, you can compute the normal cone. How do I compute the normal cone for this set? Do I need certain conditions to compute the normal cone? But at the end, first let me write this C as two simpler sets. So, let me write C as C 1 intersection C 2, where both of them are convex set, where C 1 only deals with the equality inequality constraint. and C 2 deals with the equality constraint or affine constraint. So, the normal cone to C at x bar is now written as normal cone to C 1 intersection C 2. So, how can you compute the normal cone? Basically, you have two convex sets. and you have this is the intersection zone and take any point here or say here and you are supposed to compute the normal cone. You see here again this relation between the sub differential of the indicator function and the normal cone that the normal cone is nothing but the sub differential of the indicator function would become very very important. The indicator function of C 1 intersection C 2 is same as writing indicator function of C 1 x plus indicator function of C 2 at x because you see if there is an x which is both in C 1 and C 2, then this would be both would be 0 and hence this will be 0. If so the equality holds suppose x is in C 1, but not in C 2, then x is in x is not in C 1 intersection C 2. So, this would be infinity. So, x is in C 1. So, this would be 0, but this would be infinity, but 0 in plus infinity is infinity by our law. So, this inequality holds. Now, this means the sub differential So, again these are proper lower semi continuous convex functions and uh, of course, I have not defined much about lower semi continuous convex functions, we just uh, will do it very soon in much more detail. Let me just tell you okay, the sum rule that we have learned there is applicable, assume that C 1 and C 2 is having uh, interiors. So, an interior of C 1 intersection interior of C 2 is not empty like this one. So, then you can apply the sum rule the calculus rule to write and this is nothing but and what is this? This is nothing but the normal cone to See how the calculus rule for sub differential gives you a calculus rules for the, for the normal cone and that is that is the beauty the link between the geometry and the analysis. And let me tell you what I mean by lower semi continuous function otherwise every time I use a term you might be a bit worried.
is lower semi continuous if its epigraph if and only if so I write double f if, if and only if its epigraph is closed. So, look at the function d c for a convex set take take an take an example take uh, c to be 0 1. So, that function would look like this that function would become 0 between 0 and 1 and then it will be plus infinity otherwise. So, the this is the epigraph and of course, the epigraph is closed. The epigraph is of course, closed and hence del c is a lower semi continuous function. So, for any closed set c, this is a lower semi continuous function. Of course, the set has to be closed. If the set is open, then it would not be true. Now, I have given a very geometric definition of lower semi continuity, but there is also a more mathematical definition, but looking at the audience, I would not like to put it, but for those who are mathematically oriented, just I want to remind them this simply means that. So, if it is lower semi continuous at x, this is what it means. So, this is a notion of limit which might not be clear to many, many, many students and which we do not want to deal with. So, for us the geometrical definition is the most easy definition because all the examples that we will do, we can handle it with this and you need not get so much walked up with this lower semi continuity business because at the end we will be dealing with continuous functions, functions from R n to R which are continuous and of course, they are all nice and helpful things, things which you understand pretty well. Now, my problem becomes optimality condition for my problem becomes So, in order to get the Kuntakar conditions or Karush Kuntakar conditions, I have to compute this and compute this. So, what comes out is that the Lagrangian multipliers or the Kuntakar multipliers, those lambda y, lambda i's, they are not just ordinary multipliers or auxiliary variables that you use to convert a problem from constant form to unconstant form, but they are deeply linked with the geometry of the space that you are working in the feasible set. So, our task could be to compute this as well as task could be to compute this. So, let me first today do the easier one that is let me compute n c 2 x, where c 2 is set of all x such that a x equal to b. What we will show is that n c 2 x bar is nothing but the image of A transpose. A transpose viewed as a linear mapping, every uh, matrix is a linear map and vice versa. And in order to do so, how would I go about doing so? So, so what is image of A transpose? If I have the image of A transpose here, then it is a set of all z such that z is equal to A transpose lambda for lambda element of R k. So, first let me take a z consider 
z element of image of A transpose. Then z is equal to A transpose lambda. So, let me compute this quantity. So, if this is my v, so the normal, normal if, if this must be in the normal cone, let me see whether it is in the normal cone. Then take any x in C and take the x bar, compute this. If this must be less than or equal to 0 for this has to, if this has to be in the normal cone. So, this would imply lambda times A of this means A x minus A x bar, but if this both are in C then both are equal to B. So, since now this would imply that A transpose lambda is element of the normal cone to C 2 at x bar. So, now I have to look for the reverse one. So, my next question is, is normal cone to C 2 at x bar subset of image of A transpose? Let us try out. Okay. Suppose I am having this problem, how will I try out this problem? That is the question. The way to try out this problem is as follows. You can, it is very difficult to take a V and prove that it is an image of A transpose because V in C2 is okay. C2 is a point where Ax is equal to B and nothing you know about C2, the structure is not very clear. So, how do you go about it? You go about it in this following pattern. Let, let me take a V in NC 2x bar. And let, so I am assuming on the contrary, contra on the I am assuming I am assuming something which is contrary to what I want to prove. Take v here and let v not be element of image of A transpose. The image of A transpose is a closed set, and we had already spoken about the separation theorems in the very beginning, which says that okay, if uh, V is not in the image of A transpose, since image of A transpose is a closed convex set, then what, what should I do? We should do the following. So, I can now apply the separation theorem. So, there exists a P not equal to 0, P element of R n. such that P of Z, the supremum over, okay, I will just do it much, because you are talking about strict separation, because we can talk about strict separation by strict separation. Let me write down the principle, because you might just forget it while we are doing by strict separation by the strict separation there is a p in R n. And alpha in R such that this is less than equal to alpha strictly less than p of v. Now, what does the z for and this is true for all z element of image of A transpose. Now, what I want to show from here is that P is element of kernel of A that is that is exactly what I want to show. So, now what we would do is the following is that here let us 
what is z? z is element of the form a transpose lambda for all lambda in R k. So, this would be satisfied for all lambda in R k. Now, how do I claim that A p is in kernel of A? I claim A p is equal to 0. If I claim such a fact, then I need to prove it. You see, suppose A p is not equal to 0. So, then there exists a say j, say jth component such that the jth component of a p j is either greater than 0 or less than 0. So, let me take this to be strictly greater than 0, does not matter, this can be done without loss of generality, you can do negative also does not matter. So, this is true for all lambda, so since it is true for all lambda in R k, take lambda in R k such that lambda j, j th component of lambda is positive and lambda any other component lambda i th component of lambda, lambda i is equal to 0 if i is not equal to j then you can make this lambda as big as you like, as big as you like, as big as you like. So, this will be positive number which can grow, grow, grow in such a way that it will blow up and it will cross this value of alpha, cross this value of p v and break the separation inequality. So, now what we said is that we can blow up a p lambda. Since I can blow up a p lambda, so that would break that would break the inequality that would break this inequality let us write star break. So, I cannot do that I cannot break that. So, there is a contradiction and so a p is equal to 0 and thus p is element of kernel of A. Now, I give you a homework to prove that p is actually element of c minus x bar that is p can be expressed as some x element of c minus x bar for some x in c. In fact, you can show that kernel of A is c minus x bar and this is independent of the x bar, this is an easy exercise, so just do it as homework. So, what I now get is that once I have this is a p is equal to 0, I will get p of v strictly greater than 0. Since a p is equal to 0, we have p v strictly greater than 0, but p is equal to x minus x bar. Therefore, v of x minus x bar is strictly greater than 0, but since v is element of, so, so here it will be c 2 sorry not c c 2 c 2 x c 2. So, v is, is element of n c 2 x bar and that would imply v x minus x bar is less than equal to 0 and then thus a contradiction.
So, there our initial claim that there is a V in N C 2 x bar and V is not in the image of A transpose is wrong and hence, so we conclude that N C 2 x bar is also a subset of image of A transpose. So, we have proved both ways this is subset of this and this is a subset of this and so we will have N C 2 of x bar is equal to image of A transpose. So, with this we end the talk here and in the next lecture we would like to compute this one. which would be uh, very interesting and you see the role of the status condition. Thank you very much.